The experience has uh, taught me to be able to come into a project with, with an open mind um, and it's really taught me how to focus on the details and make sure that I'm getting every little part aspect right because everything counts um, when you're implementing such a big project. So what it did was it took me from uh, a teaching career that was mostly theoretical and, and teaching but without demonstrating the final two aspects. It's one thing to say here's how you design a boat but it's a whole different thing to take that design, build it, get the feedback to the design, and then take that, launch it, and operate it. Uh, my name is Midshipman First Class Zach Rafter. I'm a uh, system engineer, and I'm from Dover, Ohio. Paul Miller, and I'm an associate professor at the U.S. Naval Academy. My part with the SailBot team is as a faculty advisor. I'm one of the two faculty advisors on the team. The other is Professor Brad Bishop of the Systems Engineering Department. The SailBot team started oh, back in 2007. One of our Naval Architecture students, Jake Gerlach, decided he wanted to participate in an event that had been very recently invented by the University of British Columbia. So he said, well, hey, can we research and determine whether or not it would be feasible for us to do it? And if so, in the spring, then we'll put together a team, try to build a boat, and compete. And that's what we did. That first year, we had a boat uh, rather rapidly built and very rapidly tested. Uh, her name was First Time. And uh, we went off and we raced, and uh, we had a blast. 2008 was the first time we competed, and we finished second in the competition. And then in 2009, we raced again, and we won it that year. And then we won it again in 2010 and 2011. The Sequester was actually an unusually large team. Uh, for the for both sides, we had uh, I think it was eight or nine naval architects total that worked on it. And during the first semester, each naval arc on the team designed uh, at least five boats. And then we had a competition amongst them for which boat was going to be the fastest. And then once we selected that boat, we went ahead and further refined it. By the second semester, we'd shifted, and at that point, we were in the construction. And we had two team members join and one team member uh, quit. And at that point, we're full into construction mode. We spent most of the semester building the boat and all its pieces. And then right at the end of the semester, we took the boat out and they learned to be the operators of the boat as well. System engineering department midshipmen were tasked with creating all the systems, electronic systems, programming all the systems, and creating the logic so that it could sail autonomously. All the hard work that was put into this project through all the years, because uh, Sailbot is a recurring project, it's, continued on each year, all the hard work from all those previous midshipmen's work uh, actually paid off and it's a great feeling. The boat for the Atlantic record we named a Boat Time and she was uh, a four foot long boat compared to our normal sail bonds which are about six and a half feet long. So we launched her toward the end of May off of Cape Cod and it was a rather rough day. Uh, she had to sail through about three meters of surf, uh, get out narrowly miss getting hit by a whale, and then off into the Grand Banks and then into the Atlantic Ocean. Well, her first night went flawlessly. She sailed along nicely. We had uh, GPS tracking data that told us where she was and how fast she was going, and she was going quite quick for her size. And then the second day, we got the weather reports that a gale was coming in. And about uh, late on the second night, she started battling uh, winds of up to 40 knots and seas of up to 25 feet. And uh, she kept plugging along, uh, didn't slow down too much, kept going. And then about the fifth day, she fell into a calm. The wind dropped to almost nothing. And at that point, she was drifting with the current, and she made a couple of big loops. On the evening of the seventh day, uh, she started sailing well again. And then we suddenly noticed that she picked up speed to be much faster than it was capable of her sailing. So either she had been caught in some incredible current or something else happened. Well. Two days later, we got an email from a Canadian scallop dragger that said that they picked her up in their net and uh, they accidentally dropped her on the deck and she was damaged. But she was still sending us signals and later in the summer, I went up to Nova Scotia and, and picked up the boat. One of the exciting things about a boat time was that she set a new record for endurance and uh, both time and distance 
for Atlantic sailing autonomous vessels. The previous record was about 140, 160 miles by the French Naval Academy, and we upped that to 240 nautical miles. Um, they sailed for about four days, we sailed for a week. And it's pretty exciting because they were a much better funded team, and there have been much better funded teams that have attempted this, uh, and we're the first undergraduate team to actually set one of these records in the about 10 year history of this competition. Uh, so one of the big things with Sailbot uh, that's unique with this is it's an entire project management. So you have to, you're going from creation to, um, from the design stages to actually creating it and implementing it. So it teaches you to look at things from a whole uh, perspective and to work through in steps and to use the people around you to uh, accomplish the task. So it was quite a bit of a teaching challenge because there aren't that many who do that full follow through life cycle type design. And so it took uh, more work than I was actually expecting, but it's been more enjoyable work. Uh, the Sailbot team benefits midshipmen by allowing mids to come together and work as a team to solve a problem. And in this case, the problem is to create a sailboat that can autonomously sail um, for the, in the case of Sequester, it was to sail in a regatta all by itself. And in the case of the transatlantic boat is to sail autonomously across the Atlantic Ocean. Well, looking out to the future, and uh, as the old saying go, uh, predictions are tough, particularly when they're about the future. And so where will we be next year? Well, I think we've got a good short-term plan, which is we're going to relaunch a boat time. We're creating a high-performance wing sail, one of the midshipmen and naval architectures going very high-tech. We'll put a wing sail on the racing sail about this year. And um, we'll also probably launch another transatlantic attempt with a larger boat that we've got. So we've got three boats that are going to be active next year. We're always looking for students and one of the things that's a little frustrating for me is that uh, although there's a lot of support from systems and from naval architectures, we really would love to have more students from other majors. We had a student from oceanography a few years ago and he did a phenomenal project that established the route that we're going to take across the Atlantic. And there's been nothing better shown that we can do than what this student did. So he generated the waypoints, we're going to follow those waypoints, and I'll give us our best opportunity for success. Other majors can help us in similar ways and join the team and participate. Comp Sci, Double E, um, Mechanical Engineering, Ocean Engineering. So it's a true interdisciplinary project because there's so many aspects of it, almost none of which are fully explored. I don't think there's a single area that we couldn't improve this boat in one way or another. And I'd love to see more students participating.